I think what you teach is very valuable. I mean, I've watched a bunch of your videos and it's all common sense and really good knowledge and the way you lay it out. And I think it's good for people to learn. It's like if you find yourself in a situation where you can use some of these tactics and information to save your life or the life of others, isn't that valuable? And it, it, are we, we trying to pretend that it's not possible that the grid can go down or that it's not possible that a natural disaster could take place or it's not possible that, you know, there could be some sort of an attack where you have to flee the city? That's crazy. It's, cra it's crazy to pretend that possibilities aren't possibilities. Mm. I, a lot of the things that we teach now are likely to get worse with time. If you look at all the bad statistics, they're up. If you look at all the good statistics, they're down. And, In terms of what? Well, if you look at, uh, let's take um, crime, for example. Crime is up um, across major metropolitan, highly populated, democratically ran areas, up 25 to 50% across the man wagon. That's violent crimes, that's homicide, murder, rape, all the bad stuff. Um, is it really that high? 25 yeah, to 50%? 25 to 50% in Jesus most metropolitan Christ. areas. Homelessness, you, you've seen the homelessness epidemic that is truly a systemic issue in San Jose, LA, uh, New York, uh, San Francisco um, are the biggest ones. That's like top four. Those numbers are not going down. They're only getting, getting worse. Does that speak to our lack of preparedness? Absolutely. It speaks to our lack of resilience. Most of the things that we thought we were going to teach at Philcraft were originally hard skills. Let's teach shoot, move, communicate. Let's teach how to apply a tourniquet. Let's teach how to use a ham radio, all that shit. That's important. But what's more important is building resilience in people. And that takes a different conversation and understanding. I also think it takes kind of an understanding of how the shit works in the first place. Because what we're really talking about in disaster is catastrophe, which is just how you react or respond based on a stressful situation. Uh, there's a term, trade anxiety. You ever heard that term, trade anxiety? No. Trade anxiety, I think I heard you recently talk on a podcast about people um, kind of not being resilient because they're, they're already fearful of s circumstance. And a lot of that lends itself from trade anxiety, which is people's, whether it's their experiences or background or their triggers and trauma or just their condition in stress, a lot of people walk around with trade anxiety where small shit is big shit. You, first world problems, a, a, a traffic jam could turn you into a sympathetic uh, nervous wreck where you literally are in fight or flight, smashing the steering wheel, screaming at the top of your lungs, more likely to commit a violent act. Well, why would that be important in preparedness? Because how you react to stress in low grade or high grade um, is important because high grade is the catastrophe. Low grade is just everyday shit. So if you're not conditioned for low grade, you'll fall the fuck apart when you have high intensity and volume in short duration and time. So all of these things that um, uh, we talk about in resilience are important to navigate. You have to be very good at navigating and being more resilient. Well, there's a lot of people that don't experience any discomfort other than annoyance, mild annoyance. They don't have any real stressors put on their on their mind or on their body. Mm -hmm. And so whenever something real comes up, they don't have any mitigation tools. They don't have any ability to overcome and adapt because they don't have to ever in their life. It's like it's it's completely atrophied. Yeah, th there's I, I've studied this a lot and and not just the neuroscience behind it, but the application of how do we train it? How do we make people more resilient? And one of, one of the things that's shocking to me, like you said, we live in a comfort crisis. 93% uh, of Americans' lives are spent indoors, 93% on average. So 7% is spent outside. There's been multiple studies of um, looking at psychology, mental health, and the benefit of putting yourself out in nature. The book Comfort Crisis, Dopamine Nation are great books that talk about these kind of things. But that virtual reality that we spend on our cell phone is dumping all of our dopamine and we don't have the desire to get out. We're not incentivized by our own chemistry because we live in an abundance in our society. Right. Feast and famine is a real fucking deal, right? Yeah. When you're famined, you're hungry 
and you go out and you want it. 